Hey art nerds, I have here a small handful of problem brushes. We have one natural hair brush that is severely bent and we've got some bushy brushes. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get this fixed. Let's start off with our bent brush. For this fix, you're going to want a glass of clean water and some masking tape. So I have assembled my cup of clean water or a jam jar in this instance, my blue tape, and my brush. And I was taught this trick while I was at SCAD during one of my inking classes. You're going to tear off enough tape to go over the top and the sides of your glass. And I like using this wide painter's tape because it gives us plenty to work with. And we're going to submerge our brush and this one is pretty ratty I will admit but it's a great example we're gonna submerge it no further than the ferrule and what we're trying to do since this is a natural hairbrush is we're trying to get the bristles to reset so I'm gonna switch the angle so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better so what I find helpful is we are going to submerge it and kind of hold it in place while we place our tape and I chose a clear cup. You don't have to do a clear cup, but I chose a clear cup so I could see what I was doing and I could make sure that I don't have too much water in. So that's a little bit too far down. So we're gonna move it up. And you guys can't see it. I was angling it from there. And then we're gonna put it, put the other piece of tape And what this is going to do is this is going to reset our bristles. You can see it's already kind of changed its shape. So I'm going to leave this for a couple of hours and then I'm going to show you another trick for this. So while we're letting this kind of marinate, if you will, we're going to fix those bushy brushes. So when it comes to bushy brushes, what usually happens is paint or ink gets caught up here near the ferrule and often just a good cleaning with some brush soap, this is the General's brush soap, can solve the problem. But sometimes you need to put a little bit of love and care and maybe some condition, some TLC back into your brushes. You can use cheap dollar store conditioner or whatever you have on hand after you've cleaned your brushes to add some elasticity back into your brush fibers. Now, once wet, many brushes will come to a point anyway, which I will show you in a minute, but it's good to clean your brushes and to condition your brushes from time to time. Normally, I would do this over at the sink where I have access to plenty of fresh, clean, running water, but since we're doing a demonstration, I will just do it here at my desk using one cup for clean, one cup for dirty. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to just clean out our brush. Now this one is a particularly dirty example. So we're just frothing it up. Sometimes I find it helpful to scrub it against the palm of my hand. I've also found makeup brush cleaners to be not the soap, but the silicon scrubby pads to be useful for getting caked in dirt. Something else I find helpful is sometimes, and I have paint pucks in the bottom of these cups, so I'm actually scrubbing this out against my paint puck. And you guys can check out a review for those by clicking here. Sometimes I find it helpful to wash particularly dirty brushes a couple of times or to kind of work the soap in at the ferrule or to let the soap sort of sit while I clean my other brushes. And when you're cleaning your brushes, even if you kind of splay the bristles to get them clean, 
you are going to want to roll them so they come to a point. And if you're traveling with brushes, in fact, you guys can check out my brush tubes video by clicking the card here where I show you guys how to use conditioner to stiffen the bristles and then use brush tubes to protect your bristles. But if you don't have access to brush tubes, you can use conditioner or brush soap to stiffen your bristles while you're traveling to help protect them and help keep them from getting all splayed out. And it's not good to wash your brushes too, too often because it does strip the, whole, the oils out of the hair. That's why we're going to condition them. So don't feel the need to do a deep clean every time you use your brushes. But if you're, say, a comic pa painter like I am, maybe every five pages or so, or when you notice that your brushes are not holding a point. And these are all natural hair watercolor brushes. Some of them are squirrel, some of them are sable, and some of them are Kalinsky sable. So this technique works on a variety of brushes. Of course, if you let, let me show you guys, if you let ink or paint dry up here in the ferrule for too long, it will eventually ruin the brush and your brushes can become brittle and the bristles can start to kind of break off. I also recommend if you have cats, don't leave these out. They will chew on them. My little monsters do. So you see, I'm letting the soap sit on my brushes. I am gonna wash that out eventually. But I'm just kind of giving it a, time, a chance to dissolve some of the paint that might have been caked up in there. And if you have a makeup brush dryer, I think I've demonstrated that in videos here on this channel before. Um, if not, I need to do that for you guys because those are great. They're very inexpensive little holders that hold your brushes while they're drying so they can dry downward and the bristles don't splay out as much. That's a great little $14 investment and you can find those over on Amazon. And I'll link those in the description below as well. Of course, you can also apply some masking tape around the base and then tape or tack that up on the wall, I guess, if you want to do it that way. All right, let's clean off some of this soap. And this water is pretty filthy, so let's use this fresh water. And if you don't have brush soap, inexpensive baby shampoo will work just fine. So you can see we still have some staining and flaking at the top. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I was getting it properly for you guys. And all of these brushes are several years old. I'm pretty abusive to my brushes and I do have pets who will eat them. And then for a while, someone had given me some of their old woolen goods without telling me that they had moths. Yay! Moths will eat your brushes too. Those went in the garbage. So once we have these all clean, I'm going to switch out my water and show you how you can condition your watercolor brushes. I have here a cup of clean water 
and Burt's Bees Conditioner. It doesn't have to be Burt's Bees. I'm actually using this because I don't like it for myself. So, works fine for my brushes. And what I will do is I'll squeeze a gross looking gob, looks like snot, into my hand, wet my brush, and then work it into the conditioner. Now, if you're trying to retrain the bristles on your brush, you can roll it between your fingers and we're rolling it into a point. And then you can let it dry like that. But we're just conditioning our brushes, so I am, and see how this one came to a point after a good cleaning? Sometimes that's all they need. Sometimes they don't really need all that treatment, but it is good to take care of your watercolor brushes every now and then. And with as much abuse as these have seen, they're still holding up quite well. But you want to reform your brushes, brushes, bristles. Boy, it's a tongue twister today. You want to reform your brushes, bristles, back into a point shape. So you want to discourage them from drying splayed out, and you want to encourage them to dry back into a tapered point. And this is where having one of those makeup brush drying stands is really handy. I don't know where mine wandered off to. And you're gonna, if you get it up in the ferrule, you're gonna wanna clean that out really, really well. And I'm resting them on my water cup. It's one of the Faber-Castell collapsible water cups and it has crenellations on the top so you can rest your brushes there while you're painting. I've had two of them for several years. I love them. I don't see any reason to buy any different water cups. They're collapsible, but I never end up collapsing them. But there's all sorts of neat sort of extra products, not art supply products, and even art supply products that can make your painting life just a little bit easier. And I'll tell you guys, when you're painting hundreds of watercolor comic pages, you need all the little tricks you can get. All right, so I'm gonna let the conditioner condition for about five minutes and then check back in with you guys. Okay, our conditioner has had a chance to work its magic. So now I'm gonna scrub that conditioner out. You can also leave it in for a while, especially if you're traveling. And it's going to restore some of that elasticity and some of that point to our brushes. So don't throw away your old damaged brushes. You can also use those for techniques like dry brush. And I've got a lovely post on that that I'll link in the cards here if you're interested in learning more about comic techniques and comic inking techniques. I use these for watercolors, I don't use them for inking, but you can treat your inking brushes the same way. Now, cleaning your brushes with brush soap will work for synthetic brushes, but there's no need to condition them. And you wanna make sure you really scrub that conditioner out. And again, normally I would do this under running water so that I have a clean water source. But since we're doing this for the purposes of demonstration, can't do that. And again, I have a paint puck. So it's like a little scrubby silicone thing in the bottom of my glass, which is, or cup, which is useful for scrubbing all that conditioner out. These are fresh and clean. I'm still allowing my squirrel hair brush that had become deformed to soak in water. I'll check in with you guys with that in a couple hours. So if possible, you're gonna to want to allow these to dry where they're not compressed against anything. That's how we end up with bent 
bristles. So you can either use that makeup stand I keep telling you guys about, or you can use a brush stand like this, or you can hang them. Ha, huh, I found it. So let me show you guys how to use it. To our left, we have our brush, our brush drying stand. To our right, we have our wet brushes, and they've already been propped up. I'm gonna ruin all that hard work, set that aside. It is quite helpful though. We're just gonna place these here for right now. And this is a collapsible brush drying stand. So that is the stand part. And what I like to do is I like to go ahead and fill it with my brushes. brush side up while I'm filling it and I try to get them all about the same height and these are all skinny narrow brushes so they go in skinny narrow holders and since this is designed for makeup brushes and not for painting brushes there is never enough skinny holders and then let me move this slightly out of the way we flip it and then we align it. That can be a little hard to do when there are brushes in there, but we're going to try our best. And voila! Et voila! And none of our brushes are touching the, the ground, our drying surface. So they can all aerate and dry naturally and not get moldy and gross. Okay, art nerds, this brush has had a chance to sit for a couple of hours. So, using this handy Daiso stand, I'm going to hold my camera and remove the brush. And as you guys can see, it's no longer nearly as bent. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to condition it and allow the conditioner to dry in. And I'm going to have it molded into the shape I want it. And that'll kind of continue to train the fibers. And you guys can see it's all... You guys can see it's all soaked up and in the shape I want it to be in. So now I'm going to work it into my brush holder so that it can dry with the bristles down and in that particular shape. So that's pretty easy to fix. If you guys need a tutorial on how to fix bent synthetic brushes, let me know. That one's a little bit more complicated and a little bit more dangerous as it involves boiling water. But the principles are pretty similar. And it's a good way to get a little extra life out of some brushes that you have abused. All right, so this is that squirrel brush from the other day. I've allowed it to dry with some conditioner in the bristles and I've used the conditioner to kind of re reinforce the point that I want. So now I have a cup of clean water and I'm just going to wash the conditioner out of the bristles. have soaked the brush up past the ferrule that's how we get all of this damage on the bottom so what you would ideally do to help kind of break up the conditioner and get the the brush in good shape again would be to scrub it against like a paint puck or something just something to kind of lightly disrupt the bristles and help get that work that conditioner out but since we didn't have that in this particular demonstration jar I had to get a little bit creative but as you guys can see, it looks like it is in good condition. It's an inexpensive little squirrel brush, but that technique will work on almost any of your natural hair watercolor brushes. So these have had a chance to dry, and I think a lot of them are looking 
in much better condition. You also have to keep in mind that for some of these, like this one here, once you dip them in water, I'll show you guys, it can come to a point on its own. So even though it dries kind of fluffed out, it doesn't mean your brush is ruined. But if it absolutely will not come to a point even if it has been wet, so let's, let's look at this one for example, this one probably won't. It's not too bad, but it's still not great. It has a belly, it doesn't come to a great point. You can use this as kind of a mop or a large area fill brush. You can also use this for dry brush techniques. You don't have to throw it away. It does still have a use. So I hope this was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys. Hopefully you can go salvage your own natural hair brushes. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have a great day. See you again soon, guys. Bye.